discussion, and we always have a wonderful discussion here after our readings. We're going to move into our open mic portion. I remind you that you cannot exceed seven minutes or it will clap you off the stage. And if you do not want to be recorded, and all of our videos are recorded and put on YouTube, Helicon West, um, then please uh, tell Amias that you would like him to turn off the video camera while you're reading. And I'll just announce the first three readers, and then we'll have them come up, and then we'll just move through from there. And so our first three readers are Mary Ellen Greenwood, Chelsea Beck, and Brock Wilson. Okay, this is a short nonfiction piece. It's called A Girl's Education. In second grade, I made wind chimes out of clay. Mrs. Run Chisel had the class mold shapes and paint them, which she then fired in a kiln. At least I think they were wind chimes. From what I remember, the end result was a circular base, like an oversized bracelet with leaves dangling from it, all held together with fishing line. On the first day, we pushed large metal cookie cutters into the flattened clay, then placed our leaves and circles on a paper plate to dry. On the second day, we would paint. On the third, we would send them to the kiln. On the fourth, we would attach all the pieces. Our mothers would be so proud. It's not supposed to be red. My teacher chastised me on day two. Red is for the autumn leaves. The base should be brown. Brown. She repeated the color so I would never again mistake brown for red. <laughs> I looked around the room where rows of brown bases were drying on old newspaper. The one red piece stood out bright as a pulled hangnail. Red. My favorite color was wrong. There's no time to start over, she sighed, contemplating what I'd done. She was deliberate in everything, even eating her daily sandwich and apple in dainty bites so small I swore she was pretending. The next year, third grade, Mrs. Piccioni had us form our cursive letters in careful swirling loops that barely brushed the bottom and top of the practice guides. Though she never told me, I believed my handwriting was good, if only because she never said otherwise. Her words were reserved for the unfortunate children who couldn't stay between the lines. During warm evenings, I waited for the train that passed through the fields after dinner. With practice timing, I gathered a handful of coins, shoved them in my back pocket, and rode my pink dirt bike over, under the freeway overpass toward the marsh where the cattails and mosquitoes lived. Reaching the track, I placed pennies and rows on the rail closest to me. My mother said to never go on the tracks, so I moved as close as I could, no touching, and felt the day's heat rise from the sleek metal. And then the train sounded. Stepping back onto the road, I watched the train lumbering closer, growing until it loomed over me. I stood parallel to the wheels, which clicked metal on metal, pushing down with the weight of several tons. When the train was safely in the distance, I searched for the coins, flung off the track from the force of the wheels and into the lava rock below. Abraham Lincoln's face was a pale smear on an oblong sheet of metal no thicker than the side of an aluminum can. Putting the press coins back in my pocket, I biked home. When I shared my coins at show and tell, the children's eyes lit up. All Mrs. Piccioni said was, don't do it again. You could have derailed the train. <laughs> In fourth grade, Mr. Parks taught us Utah history, so we each researched one of the 29 counties and wrote a report. He Xeroxed them, and we compiled it in tw all 29 in a folder, because knowing the major industry of Juab County might come in handy one day. <laughs> to prepare, we pulled large reference volumes from gunmetal grade library shelves and sat at round tables to diligently copy information into our notebooks. Encyclopedias remained in the library, but if we were responsible, Mrs. Chestnut, her bleached hair styled in a perfect round halo, let us take home any other book for a week. I had read all of the Little House on the Prairie books and Nancy Drew fixated too much on her clothes, so I turned to whatever Judy Bloom was on the shelf. From the back of the book, I pulled the sign-out card on which I would write my name before giving it to Mrs. Chestnut for safekeeping. Instead of writing my name in full one day, I wrote my initials, M-E-G, and looked at them, realizing that they formed an entirely new name, Meg. I added an A-N at the end, Megan. I would be Megan today. 
The next week, Judy Bloom and I returned to the library with a class. Mrs. Chestnut, her forehead pressed up in small worry lights, pulled Mr. Parks aside and waved a checkout card in front of him, gesturing <coughs> at the card with concern. They looked at the card and then scanned the room. Who wrote a fake name on a library card? Mr. Parks asked. We do not write fake names. Megan? Who wrote Megan? Mrs. Chestnut added. I did, I said. Why would you do that? My teacher asked. Because M-E-G are my initials, I explained, quieter. You can't do that. You have to use your real name from now on, I was told. In sixth grade, Mrs. Amel wanted to showcase her best-behaved students, five girls, so she placed their desks in a separate row. Not understanding, she was also targeting these students for mockery by those who weren't concerned about behavior anyway. Brown knows her and teacher's pet were some of the milder terms muttered when indoors and shouted when on the playground. To be on the row of honor meant that you'd proven yourself by always waiting your turn, finishing your work, using classroom manners, and never causing Mrs. Emil to raise her voice or worse, cry. She was close to retirement and cried more than some of the younger teachers. But if you pleased her, she was kind and called you honey. When she placed me on the row of honor, I heard suck up whispered from somewhere in the room, low enough for Mrs. Emil not to hear. She smiled and told the class that we were examples of model students. We were never in trouble. We did everything right. I finally figured it out. Thank you. <laughs>